Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. I'm here in Vegas, the, the city of sin, and I'm trying not to sin too much. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I just, we're, we are meeting up for the Entreprogrammers uh, live, uh, what, it's like a retreat here. Yeah. So yeah. I, got, uh, I got Josh Earl here, Hey there. And I've got Chuck Charles Max Wood here. And uh, oh, our lighting is kind of crap. Chuck is backlit. We yeah. Need, yeah, we need some like, Oh, okay. Yeah. This is not too bad. But anyway, this is our room in Vegas here. But uh, but Chuck just came back from Microsoft Build Conference, so I'm gonna actually turn on some lights here. This is there we go. All right. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to get a brain dump from Chuck uh, as we discuss what happened at at Build. So it was really interesting, um, just to give some context, we actually went out there uh, as podcasters. Um, the iFreak show, which is about iOS and JavaScript Jabber, uh, which is clearly about JavaScript, we were invited out uh, to team up with .NET Rocks to do podcasts. And so, oh, nice. Uh, they had a booth in the back corner. It was really cool. And uh, we just used uh, Carl and Richard's equipment to record. And uh, yeah, so we got to talk to Anders Heilsberg. Oh, nice. <laughs> we got to talk to um, people from the Azure team a couple okay. of different times. We talked to people from, um, I'm trying to remember them all now, uh, Hockey App. Hockey App. It, yep. It's a beta testing deployment. It's kind of like Test Flight. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Um, the iFreaks guys are talking to Xamarin today. Um, anyway, we, we got to talk to a whole bunch of people. Um, the two days that I was there, it's still going today. So okay. those guys are doing shows without me now. Um, but uh, the two days I was there, we were mostly talking JavaScript. And it was just because that's who they wound up lining up. Right. Um, they also got Rob Wormald from the uh, Angular team from Google. Oh, cool. Um, who I've talked to plenty of times because he's been on Adventures in Angular. And, uh, we actually shared a cab ride back from NTNL last month, so I know Rob, but um, we did get to chat. So uh, that was that was really cool. And the fact that Microsoft actually assigned one of their um, he he's a developer and marketer. Uh, they assigned him to basically hook us up with whoever we wanted. And so, do you want to talk to people from this team? Yeah, you want to talk to people from this team? That'd be cool. You want to talk to people from this team? Not sure why. Anyone want them? No. Okay, I'm gonna cancel them. But you know, it was it was really fun. So uh, we got out there. Um, honestly, I didn't make it to any of the sessions other than keynotes. Yeah, well, because uh, we were recording podcasts. Uh, they had some pretty big announcements. Um, Xamarin is basically free now. Yep. Um, it comes with Visual Studio, including Visual Studio Community Edition, which is free. Awesome. Yeah, so. Crazy. So yeah. those of you that have been asking, because you keep on asking about Xamarin or complaining about how it costs money and should you use it, now the answer is obvious. What I've been saying is use it. So, Oh, by the way, also, if you haven't checked out, uh, if you're wondering what Chuck is talking about, uh, go to uh, Dev Chat TV here, and uh, and you can check out Chuck's podcast. He's got He's like the podcast master. He's got all kinds of developer podcasts. You'll definitely find something of interest to you. And also our podcast, Entre Programmers Podcast, if you haven't checked that out yet. So we're all all here. We'll probably, I'll probably do a bunch of videos here, uh, just you know, with with us. So, cool. All right, back to back to Chuck here. So. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you that uh, the most interesting thing that Xamarin told us was at the party. Their marketer said, "Make sure you grab a monkey on the way out," which <laughs> sounded really funny. And I was, I asked if I could I, if I could tweet that overheard from Xamarin marketing person. Make sure you grab a monkey on the way out. Nice. Anyway, um, it was at Moscone West which is where they do all the Apple events. So, yeah. um, you know, I guess it's set up a little differently. Uh, the other two guys from iFreaks had been to WWDC, so they're like, actually, they put that over there and this over here. Um, uh, the food situation was suboptimal for the conference. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. You didn't, um, you didn't hear that here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, darn, we actually had to go out into San Francisco and find food. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So good food. 
uh, good time. Um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, so at the first keynote, um, they talked about HoloLens. Okay, which I is, want to try that. That sounds awesome. It's super cool. It, it's uh, it's a virtual reality headset. Yeah. Um, and you can, it's mostly, it anyway, when it's on, it's really easy to focus on because it's a window about this this big and it's like right here right okay in front of your face so you know it doesn't take your whole peripheral vision it's just right in front of your your eyes um, and it was it was really easy to not look past it to see other people when you walk around in it oh well, so I, I, I did bump into a few people and a few other people bumped into people but um, <laughs> hopefully there wasn't any monkey grabbing no nah, not th not that I heard about <laughs> but uh, what happened was um, yesterday I can't believe it was yesterday. It feels like longer ago. But yesterday I was standing, because I, I had, had to sneak out of the keynote early yesterday to do some podcast interviews. And um, you couldn't get, you could either get tickets the night before or the morning of uh, the day you wanted to see Mars Encounter. And so Mars Encounter oh, okay. is a HoloLens demo yeah. that Microsoft teamed up with NASA's JPL, Jet nice. Propulsion Laboratory, to put together. And it's all based on the, the photography that they've done with the Curiosity rover on Mars. And so it, you know, it's a fully immersive experience on Mars. And uh, so needless to say, people are pretty excited to get in there and see it. And uh, so anyway, I happened to be in, in the demo, in the expo hall before they opened the doors. And uh, so we got done about 10 minutes before they opened the expo hall. So I just walked over there to see if I could get a ticket before yeah. the masses came in and <laughs> took them all. And uh, the guy that was running the line, you know, they have those barriers that you pull out of the stands and they hook it in the other one. Yeah. So he had closed that off. And he's like, I can't let you in until they tell me to open the line. <laughs> Again, so. you're like, do you know who I am? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm like, all right. Well, when because I figured they they'd be like, we're oh, we're letting people into the expo hall, open the line, and then I was just going to jump in. Yeah. Well, uh, there was a breakdown in communication somewhere because all of a sudden the floor starts shaking. <laughs> I'm not kidding. The floor the floor was shaking. It was doing this, and uh, and then. Uh, people come just flying and they're sliding under the barriers. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> and then the guy looks at me and he's got this look on his face like <laughs> and he goes he goes, just get in line with them. <laughs> so is it the real deal then? Like the whole like is it because there's always like you look at the, the video and the advertisement and you're like, well, I don't know, are they like you know the Minecraft demo and all that like do you think that it's actually like legit like it's going to be what they're kind of pitching it or do you think it's I think so it's it's interesting because I mean you can walk around yeah and like the there were within the experience there were like small hills of rock or stuff yeah and it, as you like crouch down to look under overhangs and stuff like it was it was 3d Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And so you'd, you'd walk past a hill and the landscape would be, you know, moving past it the way that you would yeah. expect. So, I mean, it, it that way it was really cool. Um, it starts out with Mars and it's got like the moons and other satellites around it. Nice. And and it shows you the, um, the orbits and it, it shows you like the rotational speeds and how oh wow! Take I mean, it was like T two type of like yeah, like you, yeah. heads up display. Yeah, basically. Yeah, okay. And, and like, if you walk through an orbit, you were just closer to the planet. Oh, cool! You know, yeah. and and like I could put my hand out. That was one disconnect was that you know it looked like it was about here, but but because it was projected on the screen in front of my face, it was always in front of my hand. Okay? Oh, I see. Yeah, and so my hand never passed through it visually. Right. But the flip side was was that, you know, the the overlay was transparent except for where the planet was. And you could walk all the way around the planet and they're like pointing out features on the planet and you had to move around the planet in order to be able to see them. Oh, that's cool. And uh, but the the nice thing was was that um, you know, if you do it right, those things can like orient so that you, they're always readable if you can see that part of the planet. Yeah. Um and so it's it's well built and really intelligent. It was it was really really cool. You can wear it with glasses you need to um, nice. and then yeah just walking around I mean you know you could walk up to the Curiosity rover and like 
look under it, look around it, and you know, walk through it. <laughs> um, Buzz Aldrin was the you know kind of the the narrator guide. Yeah. And so you saw him like, you know, wearing it wasn't like a spacesuit, but you know he had like a NASA jacket on or something. And you could walk around him and see what he was wearing, and it was him, and he was talking, and it was it was really really cool. Um, you know, I, I think there are probably still some wrinkles for them to work out, but yeah, um, sounds yeah. like it's the real deal. Then that's pretty yeah. exciting. It was wow. it was really really cool. And then um, you know they teamed up with a few other uh, companies to make stuff happen. I don't remember the company that they teamed up with to make. Uh, but basically, you can run Linux stuff on Windows. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's and awesome. And the big announcement was that Bash is coming to Windows. Yes. Yep. As a first-class citizen. So yep. you get all of those open-source tools that you're used to having on a command line in, in Linux available in Windows. And that brings them a lot closer to some of the uh, runtime stuff that happens that works much better on Linux. Nice. And so th there was a lot of that that was really cool. Uh, they showed off their touch technology with the pen. Um, I kind of got the impression that most of that was already available, but I mean, they were doing some pretty awesome stuff with it. Yeah. Um, and then the Xamarin tooling, um, it looked like they had actually gotten rid of the need to have a Mac in order to emulate your iPhone. Well, so the way it worked when I was doing it was you still needed a Mac that you could use or you could develop in Visual Studio on Windows, uh -huh. yeah, and then you you would run, a VM. run it. Well, no, you'd run. You can't run OS X in, in a VM, mm -hmm. so you'd you'd have to have a build server nearby. Yeah, and you could deploy remotely over the over the build yeah. server. and then I think it would. I think you would run the. I think it would. The simulator would run on your on your PC, but it was like it was shelling out to the Mac to do the build. Yeah, yeah. and shuttling the. the data back and forth. Yeah, the way they were talking, it looked like it was much more seamless. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So, you know, whatever friction was there is gone. Because yeah. they just clicked a button and brought up an iPhone simulator and it was like, oh, see? And you don't <laughs> even have to have a machine running over here to do it anymore. Well, interesting. So, I wonder okay. if they worked out some kind of licensing agreement yeah. or something, yeah. or if they have like a cloud server that that has Mac licenses that you get yeah, ability no to connect I, to. I know for builds, you you still have to have like yeah for the full-on build process you have to have a brain but yeah oh i see interesting but okay really really interesting um they talked a lot about azure and cloud yeah and they're doing all kinds of cool stuff there um i'm probably mixing up some of the stuff they said in the keynote and some of the stuff that we got in our, our interviews but um you know it, it was exciting because node.js is a first class citizen on everything and so if you're a JavaScript developer, if you have the web experience but not the Windows experience, yeah. you can still do pretty much everything that you want to do. Nice. And it, it fit really well. Uh, they've partnered with a whole bunch of companies to do really, really cool stuff. Um, they, they had a demo by BMW in one of the keynotes talking about how they had used uh, some of the Windows systems. I, I didn't completely follow all of it because I'm not a .NET developer. But, you know, they used that technology to actually design and build the cars and put all the smart features in that tell you there's a car on your right or a car on your left. And, nice. you know, it's it's all the precursors to self-driving cars that, you know, can deal with the unexpected stuff that we as humans are probably going to do driving around the right. Um, but so now your self-driving car can have a yellow screen of death. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> but it was it was it was really really interesting and really fascinating. Um, but the other thing is is that um, Microsoft. I remember like a few years ago even when we talked about Microsoft, we talked about their closed system and you know how it only kind of worked with other Microsoft products, and they have gone well beyond that now. Oh yeah. So that. Yeah. You know, it, it works with everything they want. Everybody who has a need to use Azure, they have a need for, or they want everybody who has a need to be using some of these other systems. And it is, it is really heartening. I mean, they open sourced Chakra, uh -huh. their JavaScript uh, engine. Yep. They've open sourced a whole bunch of other systems. Mono. Yeah. Right. And I .NET. They they open sourced and, .NET. And Xamarin, I think too. Like, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that was one of the big announcements, I think, yeah. was that they're open sourcing Xamarin. Yeah, yeah. And, and .NET is on 
I mean, .NET is on Linux and Mac now, right? Yeah. Like the full, not not just the mono. Yeah. It's, right? So yeah. Yeah. And so I mean, it it was really really fascinating. Um, they have an Objective C bridge that they've built, oh, so okay. you can effectively deploy Mac and iOS apps to Windows and Windows Phone. Yeah without having to rewrite them if you've written them in Objective-C. Oh, wow. That's pretty dang cool. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it, it really kind of runs the gamut. It's like, it's like, look, you know, we, we want you to come. We want you to be a part of the family. And yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. The other thing that I kind of got out of Built that, um, just because I'm kind of an outsider, right, mm -hmm. was just, you know, they have different approaches to things, you know, and, and the way that they're, more open. So, for example, we talked to the founder of Hockey App, which was an acquisition that Microsoft yeah. did last year or the year before. Yeah. yeah, we were using that for builds. Yeah. And the thing that's interesting is that Test Flight supported when it was acquired by Apple, uh, Android and Windows Phone, and Apple actually stripped that stuff out. Yeah. And yeah. Hockey App was picked up by Microsoft, and they doubled down on those things. Nice. And said, you know, I mean, iOS is still their their most popular platform that they deploy apps to, but you can do Android and Windows Phone just as easily with them. Yeah. Yep. And you know, and it ties nicely in. And that this was the thing, and this is the whole story, is that um, it ties neatly in with uh, all of the other stuff. So with Cordova, with um, Azure, with all of the other stuff. Um, and finally, the the other things that were interesting was. Um, Satya, I forget his name, but the CEO. Yeah, yep. He got up and he basically said, "Look, we want, um, we want to have the conversation as a platform." Hold on. <laughs> Hello. <What's going> on? <laughs> We're yeah. shooting a YouTube video. Hey, hey, hey Derek. How's it going? How's it going? Oh man, it's great Good to, to finally meet you. Yeah, yeah. We, we've Chuck! never met. Him. <laughs> No C, bro. Yeah, yeah. And Derek is another entre programmer. So what's up, YouTube? Yeah. Chuck was just telling us about Build. Awesome. So yeah, yeah. So, Microsoft is doing amazing things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the Seriously. only things I haven't really talked about that they announced were uh, Skype bots. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't That's... understand what that is. So effectively, what it is is it's an integration. It it goes beyond just like connecting with a, a service and saying, "I want a pizza." Right. But it actually has intelligence that, you know, listens to your Skype conversation or reads what you're typing and then says, you set up a meeting for 12 o'clock in the, in the conference room and Cortana does this too and integrates with all this stuff. And Office 360 also has a lot of these integrations uh, with the calendar. And so it says, uh, did you want Starbucks with that? And so there's a Starbucks oh, nice. in with Cortana <laughs> or with nice. Skype, you know. Nice. There's a Domino's hook in with a lot of this that they were showing off. And so it was really interesting. And you can write all this stuff with Node.js or whatever you want. Yeah, and just and, have a bot that... Yeah. yeah. And so it's adding all these capabilities to Cortana and Skype. And it was just, it was really fascinating just to see where they're taking all this stuff. And as frustrated as I've been with Skype lately, it's nice to know that it's going to actually get some capabilities instead of just having the interface change periodically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've updated you to the latest yeah. minor tweak to this icon. Okay, thanks. We yeah. shuffled things around. Exactly. Well, the last two weeks, I haven't been able to make Skype calls for yeah. the podcasts Yeah. because everybody has to upgrade or you can't call them. Oh, yes. In fact, it won't even start the calls. Wow. Yeah. Until everybody's upgraded. And so that's been kind of a pain, but yeah, once we figured that out, we're like, you have to upgrade guys. Cool. Well, yeah. thanks. Thanks yeah. for sharing, Chuck. I'll, I'll wrap this up here. So, uh, so look for more videos. We'll probably do some more videos while we're here in Vegas. And, uh, you know, I really want to do a video in the strip joint and, you know, watch for but, face tattoos and tigers. And yeah. Things. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so thanks for joining us. If you like this channel, subscribe, take care.